Good morning, FCF. We are continuing with our theme, Freedom. And uh, one of the things that I've said each week is that freedom is a term that's used an awful lot by Christians, but I, I wonder if we've dug into God's Word and really researched the depths and the various types of freedom that He intends us to experience as everyday ordinary followers of Jesus. I'm going to read to you in a minute from the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 5, but I've got to give you a little bit of background on the book of Galatians to understand. The Apostle Paul went and he preached uh, simply trusting in Christ as the basis for human beings to be reconciled to God, to enter into the kind of relationship with God that they were created for. Trust in Christ. And he presented Christ as the, the perfection of everything that we can understand about God as well as the perfection of everything we can understand about humanity. People came to trust in Christ, become His followers, seeking to become like Him based on His teaching because they trusted Him. And then all of a sudden, some teachers came in behind Him, some Jewish teachers, and they told these new believers that they needed to practice the old laws, the laws of Moses that for some 1,500 years earlier the Jews had been practicing, and that unless they practiced those laws and kept those rituals and those festivals and so on, that they wouldn't merit acceptance with God. So this confused them, and Paul writes back to them in a very strong language saying, this is ridiculous. He compares it to this. He says, you know, why would we go back to a shadow? Why would we go back to a fragment when the fullness has come? It would be kind of like this. The law, you have to understand what it was. The law that God gave to Israel, the nation, through Moses, we think primarily of Ten Commandments, but there were 613 commandments. They were the first start, they were the beginning of the written revelation that God was going to give of Himself to the world. He was going to put it in written form. It was the start of the Bible. However, they were just fragments of the truth about God. You could only put, uh, or you could only deduce so much by looking at God's laws about Him. You could see that He's righteous and He's caring and good. But still, it, it wasn't enough to break the power of distrust completely. It wasn't enough to break the power of sin completely. But it was all moving to a culmination when God Himself, the Creator of the universe, Jesus of Nazareth, would come into the world. Now, God in all of His fullness would be revealed to us, particularly as He gave Himself sacrificially on the cross for our sins. Now we know the truth about God in all His fullness. So why would anyone want to go back to the Old Testament law, which was just a fragment, just a shadow, just a lead on, to the fullness. It would be kind of like this. Imagine the two people they met online, which is not an unusual thing to have happen today. So they meet online and they talk online for years and they only know each other online and then they finally decide, okay, so we're, we're going to you know, spend uh, two weeks in the same city together. But then after spending two weeks in the same city together, one of them decides, you know, I, I'd rather go back to just writing. Well, you pretty much rejected that person in their fullness. They have nothing left to give. The writing was the lead up. It was a fragment of a revelation of the person, but now the person came and offered themselves entirely, and when you reject that, there's nothing left. God was revealing Himself progressively in the Old Testament through the Ten Commandments, through the 613 Commandments, but now He's revealed Himself completely in Christ. There's nothing left God can do. He says, this is who I am. This is everything you can possibly know about me. You'll either come to trust in me. This will either win your heart, win your trust, or it will not. If it wins your trust, then you don't need that Old Testament law anymore because you're going to be you're going to be led by a higher law, the, the law of Christ, the life that they saw exhibited by Christ. So keep all that in mind as I read you this, just a couple simple verses. So here's Paul writing to these followers of Christ who were confused. He says in chapter 5, verse 13, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law, and he's talking about the whole Ten Commandments, the 613 commandments that Israel had. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. So, here the Apostle Paul says, you were called, my brothers, to freedom, but don't use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, in love, serve one another. What is he talking about? He's saying to these followers of Jesus, he's saying, look, you should not be bound by those Old Testament laws and dietary uh, requirements and rituals and festivals and so forth. 
No, the fullness of God has been revealed to you, but the fullness of God has been revealed to you, to me, so that we can live free from fear of God, free from sin, free from fear of death, and we can be those that give ourselves completely to God and to other people in love. He says, the freedom is not that we're free from doing what is right and doing what is good, because that's no freedom at all. That, that's just self-destruction in an in a ignorant form. So he says, don't use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, because that's just self-destruction. Rather, he says, in love, serve one another. There are many, there are many that I've come across in my Christian life that say things like, well, we're, we're free from the law. You know, we, the law doesn't bind us anymore. And they seem to indicate that, that we can just sin casually, and it doesn't matter because God forgives us all of our sins anyway. That would be like saying, you know what? I could drink poison and you can't stop me, and I'm going to drink a little poison every day of my life. Well, you're certainly free to do that, but you're going to pay a price, and anybody that loves you is going to pay a price too, because not only are you going to destroy yourself, you're destroying yourself for those that care about you. When we yield to our sinful desires, we're not, we're not expressing or we're not uh, experiencing freedom, we're experiencing bondage. So, the revelation of God and all His fullness in Christ, far from it being inferior to those commandments, those 613 commandments, they are superior. In fact, in fact, there's over a thousand commands in the New Testament that show us what the way of love is, what's the way of, of God is, because we have a great deal to learn. So, we're free from the Old Testament rituals and so forth. We're free from any system that causes us to try to earn God's merit. Once we trust in Christ, we belong to God for time and eternity. We're forgiven. We're His child. We're His chosen ones. He's going to work in us. He's going to clean us up. He's going to heal us. He's going to help us develop and grow. He'll help us put off our old self, put on our new self. But we are to cooperate with Him because we now know the truth about God and the truth about sin. And as Jesus says, that's meant to set us free so that we would never indulge our sinful desires, but rather be those that give ourselves in love to God and love to serve others. I hope you're living in the freedom that Christ brings to each of us. Oh,